All right, continuing on with our idea of drag, I said in class we'd look at this um, one more time as a regular run through. I might, I'm going to change up what our drag coefficients are uh, and set up the problem a little bit differently. And then we're, we're going to look at what the graphs should look like. So, um, okay. An object of mass M falls through a medium um, against a resistive force where that force is equal to negative KV. So, the first thing that I'm going to want, one, find the terminal velocity, and two, find velocity as a function of time, and three, show graphs. of both acceleration and velocity. So, <clears throat> to jump on this, really before we can do any of this, we need to look at the sum of the forces acting on my object. So if that's my mass m, we're going to have um, obviously mg pulling the thing down and kv pulling it up. And we know that when we drop this thing, the acceleration is going to be down. <clears throat> Pardon me. The acceleration is going to be down, and the velocity, even though it's changing, will always point in the downward direction. And that's what this negative sign is about. The negative sign tells me that this force is going to be opposite the velocity. So we know the velocity is going to be down, which means that drag force points up, opposite of weight. So, sum of my forces equals ma, and that's going to be equal to mg minus kv. That's the equation that's describing what's going on. And in terms of vocabulary, technically, that is a differential equation. Just doesn't look like it yet. A is the derivative of V. We have a differential equation. So when, when a question asks you write the differential equation, you're good just writing Newton's second law for the situation. Anyway, at terminal velocity, the acceleration is equal to zero because we have a constant velocity now. So at that point, you've got mg minus kv is equal to zero, and that terminal velocity is equal to mg over k. That's going to be the final velocity of our object. At this point, we can... So at this point, we can draw a graph of the velocity versus time. Our maximum value is going to be the terminal velocity. Now when we start off dropping this object, it has a velocity of zero. And at some later time, much, much, much later time, we get to this terminal velocity. And the way it works is that we approach it and it's not going to be great with the pen, but we approach this terminal velocity asymptotically. Okay? And, and this function, where we're heading, uh, v is equal to our terminal velocity, mg over k times 1 minus e to the negative kt over m. That's the general form of this. Um, the velocity, this function, is equal to something, our, our, our maximum value, times 1 minus e to the negative something. Um, it's good to know that this is how it works. It's going to happen a lot. We are exponentially approaching something. Now, we're going to find out, we're going to look at how to get to this equation. So, we start off with Newton's second law for our situation. Ma is equal to mg minus kv. And we substitute 
for a. M, and now we have a is the derivative of velocity with respect to time is equal to mg minus kv. We're going to separate the variables, which means we're going to put everything that's a function of v, so this and v on one side and everything that's not on the other. So we've got dv over mg minus kv and that's going to be equal to dt over m. What we have just done is called separation of variables. We put all of our variables uh, with v on one side, all of our variables with t on the other side. And now what we're going to do is integrate this function from time is zero to time is sometime later t at the same time, we're going to integrate this side from whatever our velocity was at the beginning, in this case 0, to some later velocity v. We're going to take this step rather slowly. So um, we know that that integral is going to be the natural log of the bottom part, mg minus kv, divided by the derivative of that bottom part, negative k. Now that's the in general uh, integral. A and we're going to go from 0 to v. We're going to have to apply limits. We'll do that in the next step. And the integral of dt, it's just 1 dt, is, and we'll apply limits here, t. We have to leave that in in place. And we're going to go from 0 to t. Now, the whole thing with limits, this is my initial value, this is my final value. My limits are in terms of whatever function I got with my final value inserted in minus the function, whatever I got with the initial value. So, in this case, it's going to be the natural log so we're going to take this function, natural log of mg minus kv over k, and plug in v. So natural log of mg minus kv over negative k, well that's with v plugged in, and we're going to subtract from that the same function, but with 0 plugged in this time. So the natural log of mg minus k times 0, which is just 0, all over negative k. We do the same thing with our, our t's. Our final value is t over m minus the initial value, which is 0 over m. So the nice thing about the t side of the equation is that this goes away, but, but nothing drops out over here. So we are going to multiply both sides by negative k to get rid of it. So we've got the natural log of mg minus kv minus the natural log of mg and that's equal to negative kt over m. Properties of natural logs we all remember very clearly. The natural log of mg minus kv over mg is equal to negative kt over m. And at this point we're just doing algebra, not that that makes it easy, it just means that's all we're doing now. So we make each of these the exponent to which we raise e, and that gives us mg minus kv over mg equals e to the negative kt over m. Multiply by both sides by mg, subtract mg from both sides, uh, and we get, well, if we do it all, we get v equals mg over k times 1 minus e to the negative kt over m. I skipped some steps on the algebra. I showed it last night though, so you can go back through and, and take your time and get that. So, this is my velocity. If you've got the graph for acceleration, what I'd like to do is find the acceleration. So to do that, we're going to take the derivative of what we just found for this, and I'll let you do that on your own. 
when it comes out to uh, g times e to the negative kt over n. And so what we're going to do, the next slide, is look at both graphs for this and, and make sure that makes sense. So uh, velocity as a function of time was equal to um, mg over k times 1 minus e to the negative kt over m. And the acceleration was equal to g times e to the negative kt over m. So for the velocity as a function of time, velocity time, according to this, uh, when time is equal to 0, I got mg over k times 1 minus e to the negative 0. Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so that's 0. That's good. That fits what we know about our velocity. And then a much, much later time, so essentially the limit of the velocity as time approaches 0, we got mg over k times 1 minus e, and we plug in infinity for our time a very long time later, Uh, this goes away, I'm oh, sorry, doesn't equal zero. That goes away and we're left with mg over k, which is our terminal velocity. Which is what we expect. So as we look at this, it matches the graph that we had before. Now, Looking at the acceleration in the same way, the acceleration at zero is equal to g times e to the zero. e to the zero is one, so that's equal to g. So our acceleration starts off at g, and as time goes on, a much, much longer time later, we have g times e to the negative infinity. That gives me zero. My acceleration goes down to zero, which makes sense because my velocity becomes constant as time goes on. So my acceleration is going to become zero as time goes on. And asymptotically approach zero. So uh, this is another run through of terminal velocity and a look at the graphs that go along with that.